yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a special guest today, man. I'm talking about hip-hop legend. I'm talking about West Coast royalty, man. It's it's two rappers. I, I had one of them on here. I said it's two rappers that when I was younger, I always said, man, I feel like they really did all this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they, that gangsta shit was so real. You know what I'm saying? The delivery of the shit was so believable. You know what I'm saying? That was Gangsta Nip <coughs> and Spice One. And got him here in the building with me today. Spice One, what's going down, man? Shit, man. Um, everything, man. We in here, you know, we pushing the line, pimping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> pushing the line. This shit cool meeting you. Because like I said, when I was younger, man, all at the 187, everything was 187. Everything was just so gangsta. I was like, damn, man, this nigga tough than a motherfucker, man. Like, this is one of the most gangsta niggas around this bitch. Yeah, you know, niggas was young and, and really didn't give a fuck about shit back then. We didn't <laughs> think we was going to live past 25 anyway, so... It really wasn't too much a nigga wouldn't say or wouldn't do back then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But nah, man, you know what I'm saying? What's going down though, man? You in the H? What's, what you got going on, man? Oh man, I just you know I just had a birthday. You know I just turned 21. You know. <laughs> Already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in Dallas. I did a show out there slash birthday. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the fans who came through. Uh, brought uh, all of the. They brought records, old school records, and albums and shit, and CDs and tapes and shit, and you know that that was that was cool. You know that was that was like a trip seeing my uh, my records and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah Does that know? happen pretty often? How often do, you, do people get to come up on you with all that older stuff and you're like, damn, like I ain't seen this in a minute? Um, a lot actually. You know, it, it surprises me still you know that they have a record you know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell are you gonna do with that but they probably just gonna put it on a wall or something or or, or just keep it you know because you know just to have it or whatever but um that's cool you know hey shit i mean like i said when i when i went to japan they had that shit uh, records and tapes and shit and i was like damn what the hell y'all gonna do with this I, oh you y'all had it way back then i had been holding on to it for that damn long mm. And it's valuable too, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people that collect that shit. Shout out to my homeboy New Face, you know what I'm saying? Like it's people that really just collect that shit, and that shit holds a lot of value now. You know that what shit saying? is inspiring. Like it, it keep me in the studio. Like when yeah. I see some shit like that, like that motherfucker got the old school 187 proof tape. Like that shit came out when I was like a baby in this motherfucker. So like you know, nah, I keep going. You know, um, shit. You know, you never know what type of heights you reach. You know. Now I'm just having fun with it. I told motherfucker, I told y'all I I got the motherfucking Bruce Leroy glow and shit. I'm just having fun with it. Now I'm like Curry on the court, like like Mike, like Mike Epps said. I'm like Curry on the court now when I go in the microphone booth. I'm just up in there fucking around, throwing the ball up, just going in from everywhere and shit. So, you know, I'm in there having fun, you know what I'm saying? With and that's what it that's what you're supposed to be doing anyway, but I'm in smash mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got got the new uh got the new video I Black Lambo. Yeah, yeah, Black Lambo, man, I love that, love that video, you know. Um, this actually is the um, one of my first um, projects that I actually, you know, did all, you know, as, as far as um, marketing, promotion, the videos and all that, the video and all of that, um, everything, like my project, you know, as far as uh, Thug World, me being Spice One, pushing it all myself, and that's what I plan on doing from now on. Like, you know, shit. Completely you know? independent. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It feel good um, to be able to do that and, you know, and watch your uh, fans, fans, fan base grow bigger than it was before, you know, um, and keep keep pushing, you know. It's, just, it's sitting back watching my old shit compete with my new shit and, you know, it's like Gemini Man and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, what... um. Cause uh, you been, I mean, you been there so long. Like you said, it's just about having fun, man. Like, what inspires you now? You know what I'm saying? Are you inspired by new music, or it's literally just like, shit? I've been doing it this long. I'm, you know, I look at my old shit and be like, man, I just need to keep going. Man, you know, it's. I think it's. It's like the rap guy got me. You know what I'm saying? There's something in me that that make me keep going. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I just go. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I'm inspired by a lot of things. Um, but what keeps me going um, is just the sport and the art, the art of it. Like, you know, like somebody who can't quit drawing pictures or somebody who can't quit, um, 
you know, like you can't you can't just study, like it's just gotta, in you. Just yeah, you do, it's man. like as far as far as poetry, writing, uh, making words, rhyme, playing with words. Um, you know, I do that. Um, you know, subconscious subconsciously um, half the time or whatever. I write raps. I used to write raps while I was playing video games and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just like I don't know what it is, but you know, it's been a long time and it, it just won't stop. I got something in me that's just pushing me to keep spitting and keep doing what I do, you know what I'm saying? No matter how old I get or, or how I feel, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's always some lyrics going through my head and shit 24-7, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and I want to yeah. go lay down somewhere and shit, hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. But, man, um, you in the H, man, and, you know, there's people that had told me that, like, you had spent a lot of time around here or whatever, and I was doing research and saw you from, like, College Station or something like that? Yeah, I was actually born in Bryan, in oh, Bryan, shit. Texas. Um, and uh, we moved to uh, California. Like, I think I just turned one um, when I moved to Oakland. Then we moved to Frisco, and then we ended up in Hayward. And, um, so, you know, I, I've been coming back and forth from there, you know, uh, all of the holidays, birthdays, Fourth of July. So you July's. still got family that's, that, that was yeah, there, like all my family is out here in in, in Houston and in Bryan and you know all over Texas. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think you know me me and Scarface. Uh, I think me and Scarface are related. Um, you know I got big family out here in Houston. You know what I'm saying? So, you know if if you listening and you watching this show, you know. You if you my cousin or you know some of my cousins, yeah, they they probably telling the truth if they say they. They spice one cousin out here because I got a lot of cousins out here, man. Not just a little bit, a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. big family out here in Houston. Yeah. And so, and when y'all ended up landing, like, that's, like, not too far from Oakland, right? Like, talk about, like, that whole, yeah. that's all, like, Bay Area, like. Well, yeah, you got, you know, I was just saying, you know, <laughs> it's a trip when you, you know, when you from, when you from Hayward and, uh. You know, I was just watching it, looking at this thing on Instagram the other day, and it was like, you know, uh, for all the people who say they from say they from um, uh, Oakland and they really from Hayward, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, yeah, man, y'all got to stop that, you know what I'm saying? If you're from Hayward, man, say you're from Hayward. You know, I'm from Hayward, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can sit here. I'm, I'm, yeah, I like I'm from bro. Hayward, yeah, man, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Y'all, you, you, you can say that, man. You ain't got to say you, <laughs> you ain't got to say you from Oakland and, and we know you from <laughs> You're from Hayward. <laughs> I'm from Hayward, California, man. You know what I'm saying? Same place uh, uh, Oscar Grant Kent was from. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, Pomacia Village, uh, Condos, uh, went to Mount Eden High School. You know what I'm saying? And so this is where I grew up at. You know, like maybe, you know, but Oakland is like walking distance from Hayward. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I mean, it's a, it's a dip, but, but there's, a, there's a big difference, though. And like, like, and like the town, like culture? Like what? What you mean? Like, well, yeah, no, it's the same culture, everything, you know what I'm saying? We all, but, you know, <clears throat> once you cross that, <clears throat> once you cross that border on E14, uh, East 14th, uh, and you're coming from, uh, coming out of San Leandro, because it's like, you know, Hayward, and then San Leandro is like this big, Hayward is like this big, San Leandro is this big, and then San Lorenzo is this big, and then you got Oakland, you know what I'm saying? So you cross these two little cities, they like really like two streets big or whatever. <laughs> and so you cross those and then you and you in Oakland, you know what I'm saying? So we used to ride our bike to Oakland when we was kids or whatever to go see some girls or something. We see, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's it's that close, you know what I'm saying? So, so, oh, damn. Okay, so with the rap thing, so when do you start getting into rap and shit? Because I would uh, imagine like to be that close, you've been able to see like too short because that's probably like the first person kind of coming out of your area like. Right. Yeah, cause you know, the, for the for the record, there was there was two short, and then there was there was Spice One. Like, you know, I I you know, short used to come pick me up from school, um, when I was like what sixteen. Wait, how do you even meet Too Short though? Um, through you know, I I got a, a fight, you know, some shit, some shit that went down when I was like sixteen, fighting or whatever and shit, and you know, it it got around to some people, and and I, I walked up to this. Uh, this lady, it was this little, this girl at the time, <laughs> uh, at the BART station, and it, and you ever, you know, you heard "Don't fight the feeling," you know, you're a typical mm -hmm. nigga. They kind of don't take home. This is Tice and Barbie from the Danger Zone. Yeah. Okay, one, it was, it was uh, Barbie from the, from the, uh, 
that was enticed from the from the danger zone. Oh, shit. And you know, we was kids at that time. You know, I was 16. I think she was like 16, 15. We was in the same, uh, went to the same grade. We were in the same grade or something. And uh, we was in the same grade. But she was at the bar station. I started talking to her. And I guess her cousin rocked with me. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 was, it was one of my homies, one of my OG homies. To me, it was an OG. Back then, I think he was like 20-something. <laughs> and I was We're like 16. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, we had gotten a little scuffle with some niggas and shit or whatever. And, uh, you know, she, she was like, oh, you know, it was cool to hear, you know. I was famous as a little gangster on the street already, you know. She was like, oh, oh, yeah, I heard you ain't no punk. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you right about that, you know. I said, who told you that, you know, because, you know, our thing was back then, like, okay, you know, we walk up to a female and we like, you know, you need, is anybody bothering you? Because we need somebody ass to whoop, like, we need to. Knock somebody the fuck out or something. Like, it's like 10 of us over here, and we all, like, down as fuck right now. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, no, you know, no, you know, y'all ain't got to do all that. And this ain't no gang shit. This is you and your homies. <laughs> yeah, it's just me and my homies. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We was riders, though. You know what I'm saying? We was just out. We call that shit mobbing. So we was in mob, we was, we was, we was in mob status and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, you know, my, my, um, I heard you rap. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. And she was like, spit something. I spit a little something or whatever. And she was like, oh, my my uncle is um, Two Short's manager. His name is Randy Austin. And and so um, she, I guess she told him what uh, what was up or whatever. You know, I was believing her. I got her phone number and everything. We chopped it up. I, I was believing her, but I, I, you know, I really think, you know, Randy was going to actually call me the next day. So I got a call from Short's manager the next day. Um. And you're 16 years old. And I'm 16. And my mom was like, you know, Chico, you know, somebody called here named Too Short. <laughs> somebody named Randy Austin and Too Short called here. And I'm like, you know, yeah, whatever, mom. You know what I'm saying? Quit joking. So I answered the phone next time, and it was Randy. And then, you know, I didn't believe that Randy was Randy. And then Short called. And I was like, damn. And, and it's him and shit. This is Too Short and shit. And I was on the phone. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm having a cool what, what, what does he What does he say to you? He was like, yeah, man, what, what time you get out of school, man? <laughs> I was like, I get out at about 3 o'clock. You know, I'm having a cool contest with this nigga right now. I'm like, yeah, I get out about 3 o'clock. He's like, yeah, man, we're going to slide through, man. We're going to come through. We're going to swoop you, take you to the studio, man. We're going to hear what you got, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, be, be ready at 3 o'clock. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, all right, show, for show. So I hang the phone up like, you know, that's fucking my fucking too short and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell no. Nah. So I go to school the next day, and I'm like, you know, nigga, too short coming to get me from school, nigga. Hmm. <laughs> they you, like, you telling everybody and shit. Telling every fucking body, dude. <laughs> I told everybody in the fucking school, they're too short coming to get me, nigga. They, and they was like, ain't no motherfucking too short coming to get you, nigga. They're too short coming. To, we know you can rap, Chico, but ain't no motherfucking too short coming to get you, nigga. Ooh, I'm like, I'm telling you, nigga, too short coming to get me. So when short pull up, it's me and all the homies waiting outside. <laughs> We all sitting in front of the school and shit, and then this this, this black Benz pull up, you know, and I said, "See, nigga, that's him right there." They was like, "Get the fuck out of here, no motherfucker!" Too short. Mm -hmm. And then I, I walk over to the car, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and they look in there when I get in, and they they see it's short, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I get in the back seat and drive off. You know, you drive off, go to the studio. Um, what is like born the Mac out right now? Like what? He, what is too short? Born the Mac right was now? out. That was the only thing he had out right now at the time. He had yeah. just did just finished the seventy five girls uh, deal and all that stuff, and then he was doing uh, born, he was uh, working on born the Mac. Oh, he was working on it. Um, I think it. No, no, because he had because well, don't fight the feeling. Was that on? That wasn't on born the Mac. That was on the nah, next. That was on the next one. I thought. Okay, so yeah, he had, born the Mac had been out because he he was actually when he came by himself to come get me. Um, he was in this like Burgundy Berich, the one that was on the. Cover. Oh shit! I was gonna ask if he came in the Cadillac. Yeah, and um, funny story, dude. He came and got me in the in the Burgundy Lac, the one that was on the Born and Mac album cover and shit. And I'm, I hop in the car and I'm like, man, let me drive, let me drive and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he like, man, you can't drive a motherfucking car. <laughs> And this is like the lack is still just the shit new, like yeah, it was it was brand it was, it was new lack, you know what I'm saying? Drop white top, clean as fuck, you know what I'm saying? I'm like nigga, let me fucking drive, you know what I'm saying? 
He's like, nigga, I can't let you drive my motherfucking car, nigga. You're only 16, nigga. You ain't got no motherfucking driver's license. <laughs> I remember saying this shit. And I'm like, man, I'm telling you I could drive. You know what I'm saying? But I could, I could drive because, I, you know, I, me and my homies had this little crew. We used to steal cars and shit. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> he like, was all, using all kind of shit when you was just coming up and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nigga, I, I know how to drive. You have no, you have no fucking idea. I know how to drive and shit. <laughs> you think I'm just a little schoolboy. So I don't know what the fuck you think, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, same time, you know, we, we get to the studio, you know, he, he being cool, though. He's like, man, you want a little, you want a joint, nigga, you know, so we smoke a little joint. I drink some 40 and shit, you know what I'm saying? We get to the studio, kick it and shit or whatever. I drop a few lines and shit. I do um this song called Leave It To Me. And, uh, you know. Was it on some gangster shit? Like, what, what was you on, like, at that time? It was like, you know, I, I was I was listening to a lot of, like, Rakim and a lot of um BDP back then. A lot of Ice-T and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a mix between. It was like, leave it to me. I'm a specialist, treacherous, professionalist. I think a wild shit, like a mad scientist. Hip hop and b boy, addicted to rap. I remember that shit. Yeah. You know, I was like 16, though. You know what I'm saying? So what year is it? What year is this? This had to be like '86, like '85, hmm. '86. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I dropped the shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I go back. Uh, he tell me to drive back to the house. The next day. My crew come through. <laughs> Did you have a tape and shit? Huh, no, I had. I didn't have not, nothing of it. He yeah. let me uh, have any, but I wasn't tripping. I was like, let them mix it down and all of that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? But my crew come through and they like, you know, did you go to the studio with Two Short? And all? I'm like, yeah, man. I was like, man, we gotta go get a a, a, a Baritz, a burgundy. We need a burgundy Baritz, just like the one Short drop. <laughs> and they like, you know, okay, all right, cool, let's go. So we shake the spot. We start walking around. It's like four or five of us and shit. We walking around. We see a burger. We see a burger to be rich, just like shorts. But it was a hard top. It wasn't a convertible. It had a, but it had a white top. And so we like, you know, I got the gauge and shit. <laughs> I'm like, go get. I'm like, go get it, nigga. He was like, man. He was like, I don't know. They look like some nigga. Go get the motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying <laughs> the motherfucking shit, nigga. He's like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. You know. He, Kicked some rocks and shit and walked over there, you know what I'm saying? I'm over there listening. And I hear, vroom, 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 vroom. I'm like, yeah, this nigga got the shit. You know what I'm saying? So we back out the motherfucking carport the driveway with somebody's fucking car that's probably listening to, or see this and probably mad as fuck and remember the shit. But he backs out the motherfucking driveway and shit. And we, I hop in and shit, you know what I'm saying? We go do all kind of dirt, you know, jack a few motherfuckers or whatever and shit. And, Still a few datings and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and then me and, me and the homie end up arguing and shit, and I end up kicking him out the car. And, and uh, I think he was like in North, or he was in West Oakland or, or, or somewhere and shit. And, you know, he looked like he had, he was gonna pick up the tech now. Get the fuck out, nigga! So I kicked him out, and shit. So the next day, guess where I go? Short. To short time. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Short House the next day and start doing donuts in front of the house in the Baritz. <laughs> you know, hit you know, those smoke every fucking weird. I'm not knowing that this is his mom house slash studio or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm not knowing none of this. Oh, you just went back to where y'all where he took you to. I just went to. back to where we was at and started doing donuts and shit. But for some reason, he fucking knew the car was stolen. He was like, man, get that stolen ass motherfucking car in front of my goddamn house. <laughs> it's been a lot of shit, you know. It's been a lot of times yeah, where. Yeah, stolen. Just yesterday, you was riding with him. Today, I was you... riding with him. It's been a lot of times Short done stepped out that house and said some shit like, well, well two times, but there was big shit that was going on. Like, the, that was the first time. And I was 16, and he done stepped out the house. Get that stolen ass, you know, that stolen ass car. Chico, get that stolen ass car in front of my motherfucking house. I was like, shit, man, I told you I was like a drive. So I drew, not drove, got the car up out of there. Dumped the motherfucker on 20, in, the, in, 20, in the twomp somewhere, in 20, uh, 23rd or something, shit left it in the hills. The, la the next time he came out, it was, I was, you know, it was, I was out there, um, it was a shootout out there, you know what I'm saying? Niggas tried to try to light a nigga up. My car looked like Swiss cheese in that motherfucker. I was no like, shit. I was like, this was at the studio. Yeah, you know, and um, I, I hopped out the out the back passenger door, crept around the back. You no, know, um, 
seen a few heads and try to knock them down, you know what I'm saying? Try to knock a few niggas down. I could say this because I it was fucked up. I'm mad because I didn't hit nothing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I tried to knock a few niggas down real shit. I had to fo fo, you know what I'm saying? Aiming like well, the niggas tried to end me though, you know what I'm saying? I seen him reloading and my homie was still in the car. And he couldn't get out. You know what I'm saying? A door was locked. Yeah, some beef shit going on, or this was just random Niggas shit? was just on some funny ass, hater ass bullshit. I didn't I didn't, you know, I didn't have no reason to hate on nobody. I was like number one on the fucking billboard. I, oh, you was already Spice One. Yeah, this is when I had turned like, you know, this is like at the time, um, like fast forward um, 10, 15 years from the, from, the, from the stolen car driving in front of his house. Um, now I'm in the front of the house, you know, yapping at some niggas, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get them up off me because they on some hater shit, you know what I'm saying? Hater shit went deep. I didn't think it went that motherfucking deep at the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but now I know that shit goes deep. Like it'll surprise you. Don't let that shit surprise you. You'll be a fucking victim out here. Don't think these motherfuckers ain't hating on you that that deep because they, you know what I'm saying, man. You could be sitting up and get yapped just sitting in your car just like I did. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, shit. You know, don't don't underestimate these motherfucking streets. You so you was just sitting in the car and you just happened. So they what they let off one and you got out or you saw the, or you saw some shit. Nah, I heard them. I heard them shooting from down the street. And um, <laughs> someone said, you know, close the door. You know what I'm saying? So I closed the door, turned my music up and shit. And I looked, you know, I looked to the left like maybe two seconds later. Niggas was only uh. Parked across, the, uh, not parked, but in the street, in the middle of the street, hanging out the car like Minutes of Society, nigga, with, with, with thangers, with bangers, like, and they start knocking, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, you know, fuck it, you know, just duck, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Fuck it, get down up under the, under the, under the fucking door or some shit. Them niggas was like knocking, man, like, you know what I'm saying? Our bullets was coming in into a nigga, you know, they was going like this and shit in a nigga face and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But they was just they come in and was like this and shit, you know what I'm saying? But at that point in time, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, um, these niggas shooting up my new motherfucking car. I just got this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what kind of car was it? It was just a Cherokee, like a Cherokee Jeep and shit. And I just put but some just dates on the motherfucker. Yeah. I just got it, man. And put some datings on the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And I start thinking, man, this nigga shoot my datings up. This shit is ridiculous. I'm embarrassed. I really am fucking, <laughs> shit is fucking embarrassing. I ain't getting shot at. These bitch ass niggas are actually shooting at me. I'm fucking getting shot at. And so, you know, they, they, they knocking and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my daddy was a Vietnam vet. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he told me motherfuckers start knocking at you. Just take cover. You know what I'm saying? Count their shots. They're going to have to reload sooner or later. You know what I'm saying? So I just sat back and did exactly that. You know what I'm saying? You know, if they hit me, they hit me. But I'm, I'm just going to stay undercover until them niggas have to reload. Because they're going to have to reload. So let them get out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And shit, I got the fofo. I'm trying to pull the motherfucker out. It ain't coming out of my pants and shit. Finally get the motherfucker out, creep behind the back, tell the homie to open the door. He can't open the door and shit, you know what I'm saying? They done shot the motherfucker. The whole car is full of bullet holes. I don't know how the fuck I didn't get hit. I had a bullet hole in my coat and I was wearing the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was wicked, man, you know what I'm saying? So by the time I got out the car, you know what I'm saying, I crept around the side, the niggas was reloading, I started. I seen a few heads and shit. It was in like in a seven-deuce glass house, you know what I'm saying? Old school and shit. I seen the niggas and shit. I started aiming for, not, aiming for nuggets. You know what I'm saying? I let off, let off some rockets at them niggas. They shook the spot. You know what I'm saying? And so, you and this know, all outside short spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was outside short spot. And uh, you know he, you know he, he, uh, he. It was in one song. He was like, um, niggas shooting at the studio late at night. Seen a Cherokee start shooting the spice. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. And um, he come out the house again, right? <laughs> he, come, he come out the house and he like, Chico, quit playing. Damn, why you playing, man? Quit playing shit. Quit playing in front of my motherfucking house. <laughs> I was like, man, do it look like I'm fucking playing? <laughs> Look at my car. Like, look at this shit. It's Swiss cheese, nigga. Look at do you think I did this shit? I didn't do this. It's my car. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it's been a few you know um, incidents out. You know, but you know, I, you know, I hate to say this, but it was like all in good gangster fun. You know, we had 
Well, I'm just glad I didn't get hit. But I'm not as, but I'm, I'm more glad that I didn't get hit than I am glad I didn't, I didn't hit nobody and shit. Hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. yeah. it, was, it was crazy. I probably would have never been able to, it would have been a minute for y'all heard another album and <laughs> shit. <laughs> but you know, man, shit, the, 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 you know, the, the bay like that, the town get down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Gotta expect the unexpected out of that motherfucker. Yeah. I'm sure just the same way out here, you know, it ain't really no different, you know. Uh, Willie D said that shit, my ghetto ain't no harder than yours, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Real spit. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. It's like that all over this motherfucker. Nigga just gotta pay attention, man. Be aware of your surroundings, man. Yeah. You know, especially these, these you, can't, you can't underestimate these haters, first of all. Especially if you're doing something, you know, that um, people didn't expect you to do it and or you know they can't do themselves and shit and they keep telling you you can't do it but you do it anyway because you're crazy enough to just just to try this shit just like i was you know that's what i was gonna ask you was, was that a thing like people ain't expect you to to pop like that like and then you drop let it be known you know what i'm saying like 187 yeah. proof and like i was from hayward hmm. You know, we got a complex. We got Hayward, Hayward niggas got complex. But you was already messing with Short, <laughs> though, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, short, even, even being from Hayward, though, I mean, that, you know, sh shit. Yeah, you know, it was, it was just, a, it, was a, it was a, you know, just a uh, thing and shit, just a joke. And the motherfuckers were always, always joking shit. And we still joke, you know what I'm saying, about it, you know. Oh, Hayward ass nigga. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. <laughs> but, uh, nah, man, I'm still part of the Dangerous Crew. No, I'm, I man, myself. talk about the Dangerous Crew because that's that's that shit is so live, dog. Like, that, man, Dangerous Crew is so fucking dope, and yeah. Banks and all that shit. Like, yeah, man. I mean, we 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 go back, you know. Um, we all looked out for each other in the middle of uh, real street shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's beyond the music. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Dangerous Crew is beyond music. We all you know look out, was look, looking out for each other. You know what I'm saying? As far as um, you know, anything happening. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers are, uh, go make, try to make a move before I make it. Like, nah, I mean, you can't, you can't do it. I, I got this. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you know, the, the crew is the crew. You know, it's, it's a dangerous crew, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got my my spinoff, one eight seven fact. You know, um, we was, we stick out there too. But the crazy part about, you know, um, all of that is like, a lot of the cats that. That was in a dangerous crew that was in um, 187 Fact, like, are not even here no more, you know. They all rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just memories, you know what I'm saying? Um, like shit that you want to, you know, we, 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 now we write, it, we write songs about it. You know what I'm saying? We write songs about that shit now. Um, that some of these people are gone or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> they make for interesting stories um, to learn from, from these little cats to learn from. But it, it's just crazy because it just seemed like they ain't learning shit. Like yeah. they ain't learned shit from um, from Pac and Biggie, did they? Shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, so many niggas done passed since then over the same shit. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? One, you know, uh, one after the other. It's like you sit there and be like, damn, you know. Pac uh, died in, in Vegas and Biggie died in New York over some beef and shit. That shit I know we gonna talk no... about Pac, but did you? How was your relationship with Biggie? You know, I never got to meet Biggie. I just um because him and Pac they started beefing um before I had a chance to even meet Biggie. So I never got a chance to meet him, but I got a um. I got a, uh, a clip on my Instagram where Biggie was being interviewed and they like, you know, um, you know, who's your favorite rapper on the West Coast right now? You know, what you, what you listening to? And he was like, Spice One, you know, that trigger got no heart. Hmm. And so um, when I heard that, I was like, okay, you know, it's good. This shit is crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I never got a chance to meet him in, in Pac was beefing with him. I just knew Pac went to um, went to uh, 
New York to do a verse with him. He came back with a bullet hole in his head, with a dent in his head, and some and shot up and shit. I just, I just knew that, so I was hot. Did, you know did he I'm ever saying? talk to you about that? Yeah, 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 hell yeah. He came and picked me up from the Mondrian. I was at the Mondrian Hotel <laughs> and shit. I got a song and it's, it's called Two Stories, and I, I was, I was, you know, talking about the whole thing in there. Um, you know, he had this baby blue Bentley. He had just got or whatever, and he had got this little property on the on the beach. Uh, Santa Monica uh, Beach and uh, right, off, right over by the pier, like the place where you see on Grand Theft Auto, he had a little spot over there. Like when you see the place you see on the video yeah, game, yeah, yeah, yeah. he had a little spot over there, and um, right off the right off the water. And so we came. And he had this baby blue Bentley. He was fly as fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I hop. You know, I hop in the Bentley. We smash out. You know what I'm saying? Head to the spot or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, um, he was. Talk, was talking about, he was asking me where I had been because he had, you know, he had just did Machiavelli and um, and um, All Eyes on Me. And I was like, fool, I was locked up. I was in like in the, I was in the pen. I was in the county for like three months or some shit, you know, some gun charges and shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so we was chopping it up on the way to the house. And we get there, I see uh, Kadada and his mom was there. And, um, you know, he was excited to be with her, you know what I'm saying? And uh, told his mom, uh, I remember him telling his mom, you know, and I, I it's, this is shit you can't make up, you know what I'm saying? This is him telling his mom, he was like, man, you know, he stopped. He said, mama, if anything ever happened to me, this is my nigga right here, you know what I'm saying? And um, so I was like, hey, what's up, Mrs. Shakur? How you doing? And, uh, you know, we went in, uh, went in the back. She made us some sandwiches. We chopped it up, started smoking some bud, drinking uh, Hennessy and apple juice. Mm -mm. And uh, shit, he just he took his shirt off and, 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 and his bandana, and, and, and I seen a dent right here in his head, or it was on one of the left or right side, and and I and I seen the, the bullet holes in his in his chest and his arm and shit. You know his. And I was like, you know, I immediately was like, you know, I couldn't help, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, that, what the fuck? Like, nigga, you went out there to do a verse and you came back like this, nigga? Like, hold on, that, what the fuck, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, I automatically was hot, you know what I'm saying? Like, steam coming out of my ears hot, like, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck, though? You know what I'm saying? So he started telling me what happened. He broke the shit down. Um, he said he walked into the uh, to the hotel and um, he said it was niggas with newspapers and shit and they was looking all fucking newspapers and shit or whatever you know um and uh and uh he said he, he was you know was with some of the homies or whatever he get on the elevator and the nigga run up in the elevator right before it closed and he like you know get, give up your shit or whatever you know he said the nigga said uh break not break yourself but give, give me your shit or something give up your shit or some shit and Pac said I didn't want to give up my shit so I grabbed the Grabbed the nigga gun as we started tussling and shit, you know what I'm saying? All in the elevator, he said the nigga shot one time, he still kept tussling, nigga shot twice, he kept tussling, he shot again, he shot it, say he shot him in the nuts the third time. And he said that's when he fell to the ground. You know, um, and um This is coming out of his mouth. This ain't me making up no shit. You know what I'm saying? This is what what the fuck he's telling me. So he said, you know, the third shot, he, he you know, he, he went on the ground because the nigga shot him in the nuts. You know what I'm saying? So he, he say, uh, he say he laid there like he was dead, and the nigga shot him two more times. That's when he got the graze in the head. You know what I'm saying? And um, he said, uh, niggas left. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, uh, left the elevator, and he said he rolled over and um, pulled out the. Uh, the weed and the and the and the blunts and shit and start rolling the blunt. And I was, you know, I was like, you know, what the fuck you mean? You start rolling the blunt, nigga. Like, you know, the fuck is you talking about? And he was like, um, I want to die high and shit. Man. So I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, like a motherfucker. Okay, I wish you keep going. You know what I'm saying? So he, you know, he said he rolled a bloody ass blunt, got to the top, you know, pushed the elevator, went up to the top, and, and told them niggas, you know, hey man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all motherfuckers set me up and start flipping out on the niggas and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if they had anything to do with it or none of that or whatever, you know. But it's where 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 my um 
where my um, uh, where I don't understand is if they knew them niggas was down there, why didn't they say nothing? You know, why didn't they just hit the nigga up and say, "Hey, them niggas that you ain't cool with or whatever is not down there." I mean, they down they down at the bottom of the the hotel and they're in the lobby. Don't even either don't come or or you know just know that the niggas down there. Period. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that was me and his discrepancy. That's what I was I was tripping on. Like, why the fuck they didn't just right, say something? Saying, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like y'all know who the fuck at the bottom of that goddamn in that hotel? Y'all run fucking New York. Y'all run this shit. Why didn't nobody say, hey, man, them niggas ain't cool. They down there, them niggas ain't. You know what I'm saying? So that was the whole discrepancy with it. Um, and that's where it, where it ended at with me. I didn't hear nothing else, yeah. nothing else about that. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was just on after that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I was like, you know, let them niggas do what they do. You know, nobody else get into it and shit. But ever motherfuckers jumped into it, and then Pac started calling all of them out and all of that shit, and it just got crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but all of this shit had happened while I was in the county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to just hear about it. Like, damn. This shit, all this shit happened while I was in the county. Like, this is crazy than a motherfucker. You done got out, did two albums and shit. You done got mad at motherfuckers. Oh, man, I done missed all the goddamn excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So you know, how how early do you uh how do you even meet Tupac? Um, was it over in the Bay? Because I know he was over there like early on. Yeah, we was we was doing a uh in my neighborhood video. Okay. The Hughes brothers actually shot that video. The dudes who made the minute, movie Minutes to Society, they actually shot the um in my neighborhood video, and uh you know I was up there with the homies uh in Pac. Pac smashed up and was, you know, he was singing uh he knew the words to um to the stutter rap to uh to um Money Gone. Yeah. That was the name of the song. And, and he was just singing he was just singing the words, Captain of Minutes brain with the nah. He's like, nigga, that's the shit, you know what I'm saying? So I, I was like, Oh, this nigga know the words to the fucking stutter rap is just crazy the motherfucker. And he had just did juice too, so you know, I was already tripping, like, damn, that, that nigga that's that shit crazy. That nigga just did juice. Like, damn, I said, roll, I could have played like a motherfucker. And so I'm think I'm tripping on him doing juice and then that's when the Hughes brothers come up and they say, you know, we want we want y'all to play up uh in this movie we doing. And it's called Minister Society. We want Pac to play this dude named um, Sharif, and we want you to play this dude named O Dog. Oh man! And I said, "Cool." You know, saying we. It was like you know. So I was like, you know, oh, oh, I got a script from him for the whole movie. I had a script, and um, my manager never called him or stayed in contact with him. So I lost the role to to Lorenz Tate. So I ended up firing my manager and shit. No shit, but you still, but you still had a hell of a placement on that, though. Yeah, the the uh, soundtrack and yeah. and the um, you know, the, it was actually the commercial for the movie was the uh, the song. It was it would either be straight up minutes or it would be Trigger Got No Heart when they did the commercial uh, to advertise the the movie, and that that was cool too. Hell yeah! How did how did that? Uh, Cause I mean, you had one eighty seven, which we gotta talk about that, like. How did you even put that together? Coming up to, you know what I'm saying, to put up uh, with that with the liquor and you know what I'm saying, just the way you put that whole thing together like that. I was dreaming. No sure. Well, I was dreaming I was a rap star and shit and and in the dream, this dude was playing some music and shit and, and, and I walked over to the car and you know, I asked dude what it was. He was playing and shit and he was like, Spice One, you know, that's the new shit. <laughs> Swear to God, man, I ain't not not bullshitting. He like, you know, the Spice One, you know, this the new shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, so something, some, you know, that same voice that be telling me to rap and all of that shit and coming with the lip, said, stick yourself, stick your head in the car and see, see what song made you famous. No <laughs> so shit. I stuck my head in the car. I swear to God, man, on, on, on a Bible, on a Jesus Christ the Bible, uh, kids, everything I love, I stick my head in the car. And I, and I hear myself say, he had the nine and Jay the AK. <laughs> swear to God, man. And so I, you know, I wake up. 
and I'm like sitting there and shit, you know. I literally prayed too before I went to sleep to be a rap star. And so I'm sitting You'd there. already met Short doing all this at this time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I was about eighteen or nineteen at this time. Why didn't why didn't why didn't you or did you ever do anything like signing with uh with Too Short? Um, I don't know, you know, I I don't think he um he was working with his label at, at that at the time, uh at that time when I was um pushing or whatever he was he was he wasn't trying to really sign artists he was still working on his his um him as himself as an artist um so i you know i a, rec, a random uh label um triad records uh found me on the block asked me for a tape i gave it to him and they uh got a budget from somebody 30 or 40 grand or something and, and we put the we put the 187 proof out the the um we put the um let it be known uh out and uh the next time i seen short after that he was giving me that look like <laughs> okay all right nigga okay little nigga all right <laughs> man so let it be known came out on that and then that attracted job that attracted job that got jive um that raised eyebrows and Jive was kind of like the shit at that time. Like, they had a nice-ass roster. You had Drew over there, Short over there. Uh, yeah, UGK had, was over there. They also had, they had Houdini and yeah. um, the KRS-One. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they had the Beastie Boys. They eventually ended up getting R. Kelly and Aaliyah. And, you know, they got a lot of, a lot of shit going on over there. But, the, you know, that first album... The first album we dropped, you know, we did like nine hundred thousand, and it was um, it was independent. It was not independent. It was just job. It was me on on there by myself with no um, features. And um, that alone. And that's when y'all did the video for one eight seven proof and all that. When well, we had we had did the video for one eight seven proof already. That was with up. The, um, with the uh, bottles running around and all that shit, yeah. yeah. I love that video, man. That's <laughs> one. It's, that's if not my favorite video, that's one of my favorites right there. You know, I, I don't. I don't think I was even old enough to buy alcohol when I did that video. I was, I was still like nineteen or twenty or something. Yeah. That was a fun video to do, especially after acting out all of the parts and then going back and watching them do the watching the claymation on the video. Like damn, you know, like, oh, that's why y'all had me doing this. You know, it was like act like the bottle ran under the bed. And I'm like, man, y'all motherfuckers are stupid. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all tripping and shit. Fuck you, mean act like the bottle ran under the fucking bed. <laughs> then I watched the video and the bottle ran under the fucking bed. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, the bottle got an AK. Oh shit. <laughs> That's like that shit was funny though, you know. So yeah, yeah. Man, um, with the okay, so with the Men's Society thing, because neither one of y'all made the movie. You ain't become old dog, you ain't do Sharif, and then didn't the, the whole altercation thing went down with your video shoot? Yeah, <laughs> it happened that Trigger got no heart. <laughs> <laughs> video shoot, man. Um, I'm just glad I noticed that that Alan Hughes was Alan Hughes before I got close up, you know, when I got close up on him, because I was finna clothesline that little nigga. <laughs> I was finna, like, clothesline him like the WWF and shit. <laughs> I got close up on him, it was like, oh shit, nigga, oh man. Hey man, you know, I, I quit chasing the nigga, man, what the fuck wrong with y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, hey, call a motherfucking ambulance. You, you good, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know what the <laughs> fuck happened. I'm like, man, what the fuck? But, you know, I can't, I'm not going to take the blame for that shit, man. I got, I was, I was, I was twisted. I was drunk. I had had some Hennessy's or Jack Daniels that they serve on the uh, Southwest. <laughs> I was on a Southwest flight from Oakland to, to LA and shit. And Pac picked me up from the airport <laughs> that day in a video. And, you know, I didn't know the Hughes brothers was coming to the video, you know, so he, he picked me up that day, and I'm drunk as hell and shit, and, you know, I'm fresh off the plane, like, yeah, nigga, you know, talking <laughs> hell and shit, and he driving and shit, and he like, 
throw a newspaper in my lap and shit, and they said, "Minute, uh, Hughes brothers fired Tupac Shakur from the set of." Oh, so he was—he already had it on his mind. Yeah, <laughs> cause he drunk and can't remember his lines or some shit, right? And so I'm like, you know, oh shit, like. I'm like, damn, you know, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck they, why they do that? Why they, he said, man, they This is what the newspaper said. Cause they, cause yeah. Was, okay, okay. He said, they didn't even call me and fire me or nothing. He said, he said, they just, you know, put this shit in the paper. You know what I'm saying? He was mad as fuck. Like, you know how that, you know, if you know how that nigga hit man, that nigga was mad as fuck. Have you ever seen him on TV getting mad? He was mad as fuck. <laughs> I'm beat that motherfucking ass, you know what I'm saying? Well, fuck, them, fuck that shit, nigga. I'm beat that motherfucking ass, nigga. It's thug life, nigga. He was hella mad, you know what I'm saying? So I'm drunk, though, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in there, and I, I, remember, I remember saying, you ain't going to do nothing, nigga. <laughs> I was going, oh, nigga, you ain't going to do shit, nigga. You ain't going to do that, nigga. Shut up, nigga. You ain't going to do shit, nigga. And I was, you know, I remember he was driving hella crazy and shit. He was bad as fuck. I was, you ain't gonna do that, nigga. You know, so he's driving around. I'll beat that motherfucker down. Beat that motherfucker down. <laughs> so we get to my video shoot. You know what I'm saying? I sober up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, had my hair, got my hair braided over and shit. After I got my hair braided over, I put my my Georgetown uh, jersey on and threw the through the uh, five hundred ones on or whatever with the Nike Cortez and got it in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Until you know, <laughs> me and me and Tyron, it was me and Tyron was Tyron Turner. He was right next to me and I. I remember I was going kill him out with me, glock glock, kill him out, take kill him out, take kill him. I was doing that part and shit. And, and Tyron kept on tapping me on the shoulder. And I, I was like, you know, fucking fuck, tapping me and shit. Kill him out with me, Glock, Glock. Kill him out, say, kill him out, say, kill him out, kill him out with me. What the fuck you tapping me for? Kill him out with me, Glock, Glock. And then I stopped. I was like, what? What the fuck happened? What happened? And he, and, and he, and he just pointed down the hill and shit. And I'm like, you know. And I look and I'm like, ah, oh, they must have let a, a nigga must, they must be down there getting it in. And this nigga must have got away. Well, he's going back down the hill. And so I started running full speed at the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know who it was and shit. <laughs> full speed, dude. I'm, 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 it's finna, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm on some pit bullshit right now. I'm like, oh, this nigga got away. He got away, nigga. He ain't finna get away, nigga. He ain't getting away. So I'm getting close up on him and I get closer and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Alan? <laughs> Oh, I said, man, what the fuck? I ain't cut that shit. Call an ambulance for this nigga. I remember that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we ended up going to court for that shit and everything. You know, um, I didn't, I wasn't in, implicated in anything, so I would, I didn't have to, you know, go. But I was up there. You know what I'm saying? Because some of my niggas was up there, and, and, and Pac was up there. So we went up there and shit. And, um, I think Pac got like the probation or. A couple of months. I don't know what he. I think he got probation and fine or some shit. You know they sued or some shit. I don't know. But I, I hate that went down like that. You know what I'm saying? She was crazy. Yeah. She was crazy. Yeah. Man, talk about um. Cause man, you got a screw tape, man. You on a, you on a screw tape, man, with DJ Screw, man. Talk about yeah. How you met DJ Screw and you know was that just a one off thing when you did the freestyle over there or did you ever get to like. Kick it on the regular. What was your relationship like? My um, me and Screw would kick it every now and then when I came out here when I came to Houston. Like I would be looking for him and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I like, what I do that 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 slow them um slow the music down and shit at. So you already knew about him because he was playing my, all your shit. Like I, I didn't I didn't know my cousin. You know he had hit me up. Well. When I came out here, he hit me up and was like, um, "It's this dude out here, and they, and they call him Screw, and he and he and he take your music and he slow it down, and he been he been he got all of the whole you know Houston like riding around playing your music and it slowed down and shit, and it's called Screw music and shit. I want to take you over there when you get out here. So I um got here and he took me over to Screw House and shit." And um, I had some some fire with me, some shit like we smoking now. You know what I'm saying? Like I had some fucking fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was so much fire. The shit that I had, Screw asked me what the fuck it was. 
Hmm. Like, he didn't even know what that shit was. He was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? I said, it's some weed, nigga. It's some weed. I was like, this is what we smoke out in Cali, my nigga. This is when weed was completely illegal and it was only, only this type of weed was only in California, like, period. You know what hmm. I'm saying? And he, you know, cause that's why he was like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? I said, it's weed. It's weed smoke. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, so I'm broke. Start breaking the shit down and sticking my fingers. You know what I'm saying? He like, damn, that shit stank. Like, what the fuck is that? He tripping. Like, this is some fucking fire, nigga. Like, true. Like, okay, I know you from Cali, nigga. You got to be, you know, breaking the shit down. Then this nigga break out with the motherfucking syrup and shit, right? Hmm. And so I'm like, you know, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> this is like the, uh, 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 what you call it, a historical meeting between the the West and the, and, and the Midwest, dude. <laughs> this is some historical shit because we both don't know what the fuck it is. He don't know what the fuck this is I got, and I don't know what the fuck that is he got. So we like, okay, well, okay, well, fuck that. I'm a, I said, I got this shit rolled up. I'm a dip it in that shit. Oh, you dipped the swear in the, in the, in the syrup? Okay, okay. <laughs> so I dipped the weed in the syrup, the blood, the whole blood. About three or four of them motherfuckers in the syrup. Me and Screw sat there. Yeah, you ain't pour up nothing. Or you just, you just, just uh, had it on the square. Yeah, we, we poured up and everything. Yeah, yeah. We got the, we got the weed, the weed dipped in the, in, in the motherfucking pot. We, we, we on one, dude. <laughs> he started playing some, some beats and shit, fucking around, and we just sitting up there chilling. And he put on East Bay Gangster beat, and I went up in there and spit that shit. You know, chilling in Houston, Texas, kicking it with my niggas screw. I'm coming with one of the seven, so give me the clip and let me blow. See, I came here packing my full vodka. You know what I'm saying? I was mm -hmm. I was off the dome. That was, was a freestyle. The, yeah, I was, I was, I was wondering yeah, if that was I was freestyle. off the dome. That shit was hard. Yeah. And I put you know, I was fucked up. <laughs> I was twisted. You gotta run. You gotta just understand how fucked up I was in that shit, nigga. Cause after I spit that verse, I went and sat back down and shit. And we was listening to it. And all of a sudden, screw was Head first on the fucking. <laughs> and I, was, I was sitting there like this shit. <laughs> My cousin came in there and started fucking with us. Nigga, y'all niggas fucked up. Y'all niggas fucked up. <laughs> Laughing and shit, you know what I'm saying? I think we laid there for about a few hours and shit before we got up. Then he put a little mix on the shit, and I, and I, I think he gave me a copy of it. And, um, you know, I went back to my, my grandmama house or whatever, my auntie house, and started chilling and shit or whatever. And, um, you know, and they, next thing you know, um, people hit me up like, nigga, your tape, your screw tape all over you see this shit. Mm. I'm like, screw. I'm like, yeah, I hit him up, nigga. I'm coming back to fuck with you. So, you know, it was always, every time I came out here, you know, I, I'd be headed to to screw house and uh, to the shop or something. You know what I'm saying? You play so much of your shit. Like, welcome to the ghetto. Hella tapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I fuck came it. out here and believe it or not, dude. When we, when, we, when I did the Dangerous Crew album at 16 and I was still in high school, <laughs> I came out here and passing that shit out. I was passing out the Dangerous Crew tapes and, and albums and everybody was like, you know, he a rapper from California, he rapper too short and shit. I'm 16. Hmm. And I was passing out. I had a few a few records and tapes I passed out to people out here. Um, I don't know if they might still have it or even know, but I, I remember coming out here with my with my records at sixteen and passing them out the one with me and Too Short did. Yeah, that's crazy. What what other uh, man? Talk about some more Houston shit, man. That you got like memories and shit. You ever done any records with Scarface or uh, Ghetto Boys or? Um. Well, man, me, me Face, we we uh we way overdue. We got to get it in. You know what I'm saying? I talked to him. Uh, you know, I talked to Face from time to time. You know, because we found out we was cousins and shit. So. You know, I, I hit him. This up. is recently that y'all just found it out? Well, uh, Lil J was kind of like staring at me. We was at Draped Up, Dripped Out video back in the day. Lil J was like staring at me from across the fucking parking lot, hella weird and shit. <laughs> that nigga was staring at me, like looking at me hella hard and shit. And I, I, I was looking across the parking lot. I was like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he was, he said, <laughs> and so I walked over there, you know, and he said, you know, who who did you say your kin was? Like who you a kin of? Who you a kin to? And I, I said he said what's your last name and all that. So I started telling him, but he's like he said man you and Face is cousins. And so this this little Jay telling me I'm like man get the fuck out of here. Me and Face ain't cousins and shit. And so I come out here a few more times and then one time I came out here and, and, and Face was with my cousins and they was cousins and we was all cousins and shit and it was like crazy <laughs> as fuck. Like damn. Damn, okay, Lil' J knew what the fuck he was talking about. That nigga just told, 
How the fuck did he know that shit? Like, your nigga just looking at me yellow hard, like, okay, no, nah, you kidding in the face, nigga. So, yeah, that, that was crazy. Yeah. That was some crazy Man, shit. talk about, um, because you had a relationship with Easy e. I think you had, I saw somewhere you might have talked to him, like, one of his last conversations before you. I was going to sign with Ruthless. The, the, the day no Easy found out he had AIDS, I had came out to um, LA. He had flew me out there. He had to pay for the ticket and everything. I was coming out to L.A. to, to, to fuck with Easy and, um, and do some shit with, with my homie Cocaine and above the law and all of them niggas, you know what I'm saying? We was all rocking, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I was going to go out there and kick with my guys. And, uh, you know, possibly sign a, a contract to Ruthless Records or whatever um, and, and, and get it in. You was going to leave? You wanted to leave Jive at the time? Um, yeah. I think I yeah he was gonna he was gonna buy him out and all of that shit. But um, shit when I got there to to the, to the um, hotel and everything and shit. Uh, um, the homegirls uh, the hoes with attitudes and shit. <laughs> they hit me up and they was like easy you know he in the hospital he wasn't feeling good. Uh, he said, just uh, chill out, the room paid for and all of that, just chill out for a minute until we figure out what's, what it is. And so, you know, I posted there for a couple of days, and, when, you know, the next, I, when I found, I started watching the news, I knew what was up, and I just went back to the house. Like, damn, man, this shit is crazy to the motherfucker. Like, damn. But that was my partner, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was that was one of my homies. You you don't have too many friends in this game, you know what I'm saying? Me, me and Easy never cross heads or nothing like that. That was just my homie. Like, every time I seen him, we I'd give him a hug and I'd tap him on his back to see if he had his vest on and he'd do the same. And then we'd look at each other and be like, ah, nigga, you got the vest on, motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was my homie, though, you know what I'm saying? We, we go back. That was my guy. Yeah, yeah. Man, what, um... If you had to say, who's like the top five greatest West Coast artists of all time? I would say, um, I mean, I would have to give it up to Ice T, man. Like, you can't, you can't even mention West Coast without mentioning Six in the Morning, the, the classic, legendary song Six in the Morning from Ice T, because that, that even spawned, um, that spawned uh, Boys in the Hood, spawned. Uh, 187 proof, you know. Um, That's what I was gonna say. You can hear, it. you definitely can hear it in, in 187. Yeah, proof, you yeah. know, um, all of those songs are attached. You can attach them to each other because they all like some cool ass gangsters, gangster ass stories. Um, you know, legendary shit. But but you could, Ice T was like the first. You know, Short was the first pimp. Ice T was the L.A. L.A. gangster. L.A. player. Yeah. And, and, and Short was the uh, uh, the pimp. And uh, we had Ice-T and Too Short. That's what I was listening to. So, you know, I, I would say, I'm, I'm just going to go down the line from the from the first to the last. It was it was Ice, it was Short, and it was Spice One. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was Ice, it was Short, then it was N.W.A. And then, then, uh, then, then I came, then Spice One came. So that's four. And then I got to give it to... Um, Snoop, gotta give it to Snoop. Yeah. So I think that's that'll be the, the, the top. NWA, five. I mean, shit, you take up so many slots with that. I mean, you yeah, got, that's a whole got, group. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, and because when I say NWA, it's like it's crazy because, like, you know, if you didn't spawn from that, from that, then you know, who the hell was you? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, and if you did. If you didn't spawn from that and you and you blew up anyway, then then you 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 the shit, nigga. You you did that shit without Dr. Dre and and Cube and all of them. You like like eight, you know what I'm saying? And, and quick, you know these cats did did that shit without without a Dr. Dre or without a, a Ice Cube or a none of that shit, you know what I'm saying? So I mean it's you know you gotta give motherfuckers props where it's due, you know what I'm saying? Like shit is crazy. Yeah. If you were to uh, cause they had the E40 and the two short verses, that shit was hard. If you were to do one, who you think would be your equivalent? Um, it's you know it's 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 really you know it, it's really hard to say because you know we've been trying to do a versus, and it's and it's hard to say because um, first of all I'm underrated. Thanks. Um, 
I feel I'm very underrated, you know, um, considering the work I, I've done over the years as far as these movie soundtracks and all of this shit, all these fucking songs and platinum and gold plaques and movie soundtracks. You got three. You got at least three gold albums, right? Of my own. Of your own solo albums, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and considering you know all the other shit and you know so it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, my work ethic. You know, um, shit. When I was writing music, when I was when I was actually writing my raps down, I, I could do an album in nine days, a whole fucking album, if I wanted to, you know, front to back. I, mean, I ain't talking twelve bars and shit. I'm talking sixteen bars, three fucking verses, Chorus, sixteen bars, violent. hooks, and yeah. all, yeah. nine days. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's hard, man, because shit. Um, nigga, gonna take it back to one the first album we did. The first album we did four videos off that motherfucker. The first uh, Spice One album we had. One Eight Seven Proof in my neighborhood. Welcome to the ghetto. And uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it was the fourth video we did to that. To um, what was it? East Bay Gangster. So off of, off the first album. And it went. We did nine hundred thousand or more. You know, considering how the record label, you know, they got to give you a bonus when your shit go platinum, so it's hard for them to let it go past nine hundred thousand. But you think um, you got held on a few albums like that? Fuck yeah, hell mm. yeah! They want to give me that bonus. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They want to see that see a motherfucker with no money like that. I don't know why, but yeah. So I mean, but you know, shit. The first album, I'm gonna do songs. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna do four. Hit singles off that motherfucker, off the first album, and then you go, you got one eighty seven. He wrote with with the um, uh, um, trigger got no heart on there, and, and um, face of a desperate man. And uh, why is one niggas got no heart? Trigger got no heart. Radio radio version purposes. They let you say trigger. Right. <laughs> they wouldn't let you say nigga. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But um, you yeah, know, which is wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you you make different versions of a song. You you can get you know it's, you know you can get paid off one song, like, five six different ways, man. Off one song, you know, video, the remix, the. The uh, radio version, the, the edited version, the, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, shit, you know, they was doing their thing back then. They'll make more than one version of the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the, um, if somebody said, man, all right, I want to listen to Spice One, what would you say? These are the five Spice One songs you got to check out if you ain't never heard a Spice One song. Or you, you want to become a Spice One fan or, like, get into Spice One music? I would say they would, um... If I wanted to familiarize, I would definitely tell them 187 Proof. I would tell them um, Welcome to the Ghetto. I would tell them um, Jealous Got Me Strapped, hmm. with me and Pac. I would tell them um, uh, um, Hard to Kill with me and Method Man. And um, was that five? Was that, that was five? four. You got one more. Um, would probably be the new one with me and Snoop. Hmm. Yeah. Just so that. Isn't that's interesting? You wouldn't put uh, nigga got trigger guys no harder now. Well, if it was someone who didn't know who I was, then I would want to. I would, I would want them to hear, you know, the the collabs that I have with other artists and how much the other artists respect me as hmm. an artist. Hmm. Um. Cause it's hard to tell somebody who you are, and they don't know, you know, if they don't know who Spice One is, and I'm, you know, just picture being me and you talking to a motherfucker who don't know who you are, and you gotta tell them, you know, I taught Tupac some shit, nigga. Hmm. And who the fuck is gonna believe that if they don't know who you are? Talk about what you talk. Talk think about you're joking. Talk about what you taught Pac. That's, that's interesting. You said that. I mean, shit. You you listen to um. 
his album. He got a song called "I Wonder If Heaven Got a Ghetto." You know, I took that line from Those, yeah. That came yeah. from. Pac taught me a lot of shit too. I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't learn from him. Of course, you know what I'm saying. That was my homie. Hell yeah, I learned a lot from Pac. You know, uh, we, we collabed on a lot of shit. But it's hard to tell somebody that if they don't know who you are, yeah. they'll think I'm some. I was crazy and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and and I have, you know, I've I had to talk to motherfuckers and tell them like, you know. No shit. Yeah, you know, when you meet people and they don't know who who you are because, you know, you get you get so you get you 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 get so uh out of sight, out of mind. Um It was like the six million dollar man story and shit, you know what I'm saying? A motherfucker crashed, I was breaking up, I was breaking up, I crashed and you know, now I I I was rebuilding. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, I've rebuilt myself as far as mentally uh, uh, towards 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 marketing, promotion, my music, knowing how to you know drop my music through my label, and you know I'm still learning learning a lot, and I still got a lot to learn. But um, you know, shit, the game was to be was was to be sold, not told, and I, I didn't have enough money to pay a motherfucker to tell me shit. I had to just go learn it my goddamn self. Hmm. I didn't have no time for that shit. I thought it was each one teach one, but I guess I was fucked up, huh? I guess I was wrong. But in in, in reality, it's, it's it's each one teach one. It ain't it ain't the game is to be sold. And I told us that's, that's that's pimp shit. You know, that's that's for hoes. That's what a pimp tell a hoe. The game is to be sold, not told. That ain't what you tell your partner, nigga. You supposed to you tell your partner each one teach one. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you know, motherfucker didn't tell me shit. Just like when I wanted to play hoop, nigga didn't help me get no A's so I can get on the team. You know what I'm saying? I never got on the motherfucking team. I was slam dunking at 16. Hmm. Ball up against the backboard, 360s, all that shit. 16. So you had hoop dreams and shit at first. Yeah, real shit. Yeah. So I mean, same same way. Motherfucker ain't gonna help a nigga do shit. You gotta do the shit on your own, man. You gotta do it on your own um, um, and, and watch, and, and then, then, then they come. If, if you build, they will come. You gotta build that shit. You gotta build something, then they gonna come. That motherfucker ain't gonna believe. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. That's a fact. I, I, I was talking earlier. You know, um, each one of them plaques are half a million copies uh, to nine hundred thousand copies a piece, which is they were thirteen dollars a unit. You do the math on that. That's how much I'm worth. That's how much I'm worth. In reality, shit, you could walk around here asshole naked and the melanin in your skin is worth four, four, three or four million dollars. Don't never let nobody tell you you ain't worth shit. Hmm. You know, motherfucker gotta be out here on his own. I put the one on the end of my name for a reason. Because when it came down to it, and shit happened, and, and I had to get to move, and I had to make a move, and I had to get myself out of bullshit and all kind of shit. I had one motherfucker to count on, and that was me. That's why Snoop was on there thinking, I thank me for this shit, and I thank me for doing that, I thank me for doing that, because you know it's a lot. It's hard to find a motherfucker who really is interested or help or yo fucking with you in your struggle. You know uh, what I'm saying? You saying some real ass shit right now, man? Yeah, you know, for like, real. You, 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 you for can't real. find a motherfucker that's really gonna be, you know. Nobody gonna be they on your shit like, your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you are. Yeah, you facts. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to release my own shit like this uh 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 um this this new single, uh Black Lambo, is me like lashing out. Like saying, fuck that. I'm finna put some marketing and promotion behind this shit. I'm finna do my own fucking video. I'm gonna pay to do this. I'm gonna pay to do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make this shit. Make sure this shit pop my motherfucking self. I'm gonna make sure the beat slap it. I'm gonna make sure the album cover look good. I'm gonna make sure this shit is hot. This is literally coming from Spice One. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we gonna see what it do. So... You know, we push it behind this motherfucker and we gonna see what it do. You know, and, and as far as the other the other songs I showed you before we started the uh, podcast, those too. You know, we gonna put some change behind that and, and you know, we gonna try to get it get it popping for real. So, hopefully, you know, my, motherfuckers, st uh, stay tuned. Fuck with me on the IG and all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? What's your, what's your uh, social media? Oh, before we do that though, 
Can you talk about Pimp C a little bit? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. That's my guy. Um, me and Pimp, we both, I think we both got signed to Jive around the same time. We're both real young, man. And um, I just remember when we both, when we did the uh, Menace to Society soundtrack, and we was all, you know, we was out here, we was doing a show in Dallas somewhere, and we was just, chopping it up like man you know um um i'm like i'm listening to uh pocket full of stones and shit and i'm like man this shit is slapping you know what i'm saying i I, was, I became a fan instantly you know what i'm saying like and you know after that after that show in dallas and we kicked it and you know um you know him and bun b it, it, it take take trips out to the bay just to come fuck with a nigga and shit we get hotel room sit up there and smoke all day get some little females and shit just be out there you mm. know what i'm saying Wherever we was at, just kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Doing some songs or whatever and shit. But, yeah, man, man, you know, that, that was my guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Pimp go back, shit. I mean, you tell, you know, he, the hotel he passed away in was the, was the one. Like, that's what we all kicked it at. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if anybody wanted to say, if anybody said, you know, hey, you know, Spice, you know, you know what Pimp C at and shit, I'd be like, shit, he probably at the Mondrian, fool, let's go to the Mondrian. And the yeah, nigga would have been up there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> shit. That was my guy, shit. Yeah, yeah. Man, if you had to, because um, me and my friends talk about this, and you had an actual relationship with him, he was so many things. If Pac was still alive, what do you think he would have grown up to be? Because he died so young, he never really got to, like, evolve from, you know what I'm saying, where he was in life. I mean, I mean, I would hope he would, you know, he would have um, been successful with the um, with the Thug Nation, Thug Nation um, conglomerates or enterprise, or you know, he was trying to build, and um, you know, that was that was that would, that would meant a lot to both of us. You know what I'm saying? As far as what he was planning on doing with Thug Nation, and you know, it was gonna be like, you know. We was gonna start foundations for the for kids and all kind of you know just all kind of shit we had planned for for Thug Nation you know what I'm saying um, and uh, I think you know we we'd end up doing a lot of movies and shit he did some more movies with John Singleton before he passed away we did we would did a lot of shit man you know every time he did a movie he would call me to the set like if we was in L.A. you know like most of the movies he would do I would be on the set just on the set chilling. Um, and that was cool, you know, because it was that was a connection to, to you know, a John Singleton or whoever was had been shooting a movie at the time, and he, he was just working with, with John a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I was I was planning on doing some stuff with them. I'm actually in Baby Boy, but you know, I'm in there for a quick little hot little second, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just I was just passing by the the set, yeah. and they was like Spikes, you know what I'm saying? Come over here, stand over here, you know what I'm saying? So I stood there for a minute, so yeah. Um, it was about to go. It was about to go, man. It was right, you was ba- I gotta go back and watch Baby Boy then, man. I, I miss you now. What, what? I had a light blue um, racing jacket, uh, white bandana, braids sticking down. What, what was the scene? Car wash scene when um, when uh, uh, when Jody bought the weed, went to go get the weed or something from somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. At the car wash, uh-huh. and you looking if you look in the background, you'll see me standing there with the white with the, with the uh, white bandana on, a light blue racing jacket and shit. But I was just standing there, you know what I'm saying? I didn't talk or nothing, had no scene, no, no uh, role or nothing in there. But um, that was just about to begin. It was about to start going down. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was about to take off, because the next move was definitely gonna be, you know, some, in some, in some shit. Because I know Pac was in there speaking for me. You know what I'm saying? So eventually, Pac would have got talked. Hopefully, got got John to get us in get us in a movie or something you know what i'm saying it, who knows you know because that was the homie and he, you know he, he still um you know he he uh, even from the grave he's he still uh opening doors for me you know what mm. i'm saying as, as far as it's being the homie and all of that shit um that was that was my guy shit hell yeah uh, really well man i appreciate you coming through man you know I mean? uh, for sure hell yeah anytime man you know let me know if you need some of the homies to come through you know what i'm saying i holler at eight you know you know i still stay in contact with all my guys definitely so you know definitely. shit we can definitely do some more shit man hell yeah and some music too because we're going to produce some shit too i they probably ain't tell you that but i, uh, produce yeah. shit, man. I gotta sing some music like i say slide me some shit i can sink my teeth into <laughs> man i'm on I'm, I'm uh motherfucking uh uh 
Got the, uh, the, 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 the I'm a dog with the high pro glow, baby. Hmm. Yeah, already, <laughs> yeah. already. You want to get your social media out? You want to get up out here? Um, my Instagram is the real spice one. You spell out one. It's got the blue check mark on it. My Twitter is the real spice one, and it's the number one. It's got the blue check mark on it. And um, my Facebook is just uh, just you know it's the spice one. The uh, fan page, the spice one. Uh, my Facebook and uh, check out my new video Black Lambo and uh, yeah look for Night Rider the, ne the next single and a single with me and Snoop Dogg we finna drop a video to that uh, so y'all stay tuned man you know what I'm saying I, I ain't gonna say I'm back cause I always been here but you mm. know I got some shit in store for y'all that y'all probably been looking for man y'all probably been looking if you ever was a Spice One fan the shit that you been looking for me to do with my probably about to do it right now so stay tuned <laughs> all right that's what it is man it's a donnie Houston podcast spice one hey man we got donnie Houston. Blah!